In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, it must be a big day. Everyone's blowing their nose. I'm having a hard time seeing for the smoke. <laughs> the scent fills the building. It must be a day of importance in the church. And today is the last Sunday of our church year. Next Sunday is the New Year, first Sunday of Advent, the beginning of the preparation for the coming of Christ at Christmas time. But today we celebrate the risen Christ, not just Jesus, but God, Jesus the King. You know, in the church, we generally have three large forms of the, of the cross. The first form is the one we see on the altar, which sometimes gets hidden in that beautiful stained glass window. The plain cross, the cross with no Jesus on it, the cross that symbolizes the resurrection, the eternal love of God for his son and for God's people. And then we have a cross that we don't see in, in this parish very often, but many churches have one. It's the cross with Jesus suffering in the dying Christ upon the cross, offering himself as a, as a suffrage for our sins, a symbol of the forgiveness of God for all of us, no matter what we do. And then we have the cross that symbolizes today. The cross that's called the Christus Rex. It's the one that we see over the pulpit. I'm not quite sure why we need to have a cross right over the priest as she or he celebrates or preaches, but for some reason that's the symbol. The symbol of Christ. Not just Christ who died for our sins, not just the simple, the, the simple cross that emphasizes the resurrection. But the cross that symbolizes Christ as the center of life, Christ the King, who reigns over all of us. You know, in the United States, we don't think of kings too terribly often. The last king that we had was George III, and if I remember correctly, that didn't turn out very well. <laughs> kings, for us in the world in which we live today, are often just figureheads. When the Queen of England, for example, produces a speech, actually it's written for her by the government. But the king that the people of Jerusalem, the people of Israel understood, was a king who led them into battle. A king that was triumphant, that could not be beaten, that headed a great army with a swinging sword, I often think of them as being on a big white horse, leading triumph into the world. This is what the Jews expected that the Savior, the Messiah, would be. That kind of a king. Born into the pageantry and the incense, if you will, the symbolism of opulence and power and strength. And instead we get a baby born in a stable from a 13-year-old girl who was a peasant, not particularly queenly at that point, we get a humble servant, a different sort of a king. And it's this Jesus that came to show us what it meant to be a king. It's often said that the most powerful kind of government the world can have is a benevolent monarchy. That is, an all-powerful king who cares only for the welfare of the people. I don't think such a king really ever existed, although Welsh myth, Welsh myth wants Arthur to be that kind of a king. But Jesus came as a different kind of king. Pilate says to him, are you a king? And Jesus replied, is you say that I am, is he a king? We say that he is.
But he's not a king that reigns with power. He's a king that reigns with humility. He's a king that is a true servant to the people. He gave us the greatest gift we could possibly have, the gift of freedom from our sins, which I don't know about you, but mine are many. A gift of being lifted, of being raised, of being elevated. But along with that gift comes a commandment, a commandment to be like Christ. A commandment that calls us not just to passively reap in all of the benefits of this benevolent king, but to respond to them. Now as we look at ourselves on this last day of the Christian year, as we begin to get ready to prepare ourselves for that coming of Christ, that Christmas moment, let's look back at the year behind us. Let's look at how well we have served our King, at how well we have done in being the people of God. And let's do it with openness and honesty, looking at ourselves. Did we just respond? Oh, thank you, Jesus, for all of the things you've given me. Or did we respond by being the kind of person he calls us to be? Did we just multiply our sins because we know we were forgiven? Or have we reached out into the world with the teaching of Christ in our being? In who we are, in what we do, in how we respond? What is it that we have done in this year past that allows the reality of that Christ to be present? Jesus came to earth. He called his disciples. And we believe that those disciples called other disciples who became bishops. And that comes all the way down to today's world. And those bishops made priests and deacons to carry out that ministry. And then they called each and every one of us who are baptized followers of Christ to be that presence of Jesus in the world. To be the hands that do the labor of the king. To be the people who love one another. The people who respond to each other's needs. How often have we done that in this year past? What is it, as we look at ourselves, that calls us to be followers of this king? Pilate asks the question, are you a king? And they say, in response, you say that I am. And he says, am I a Jew? Am I a follower of God? But our response can't be that, can it? Our response is, I'm called to be a child of God. I was baptized into that eternal priesthood. The priest celebrates the Eucharist at the table. The deacon takes it across the bridge into the world. But it is all of us who are the ministers of God in the world that God placed us in. We're all called to be the love of God here today and now. And how many of us are actively doing that? Are we working in the fields? Or are we just sitting in the palace, basking in the beauty of God's presence? We're not called to be sitters. We're called to be the people of God. As we begin our new year, as we begin to be celebrating this beautiful Emmanuel, Christ with us, are we ready to take up the cross? Are we ready to be servants of the King? Are we ready to be the true people of God? It's a question only we can answer, each of us individually. 
Christ moves us, moves us in our own particular unique way. He brings into our presence people who need our love. People who need that reality of Christ in their life. And how well do we respond? What are we willing to give up to be subjects of this Christ, the King? Almighty God, help us to see your presence in our lives as the directing force, as the example, as the guidance for what it is that we are to do and to be. Strengthen us by your presence to not merely stand and bask in the beauty of your grace, but to respond to it by the things that we do, the people that we touch, and the people that we are. In your holy name, amen. Thank <laughs> you.